Hey, Don here. Okay, I'm going to adjust my audio a little bit because I hear just a little old rumble in the SM58. I think the gain's a little high. I'm not, I keep it, it's kind of <coughs> tricky uh, running it through this uh, effects unit. It's always that way with audio, but. You need to balance your gain and your line level input, your your channel level. Um, but when you're using the uh, an effects unit, then kind of changes the uh, what's the, the gain structures change. You know, it changes the dynamics of everything. Um, if you don't have a hot enough signal, then it'll get cut off too 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 quick to cut down. But the compressor and the noise gate will cut it down too quick. Uh, you won't get your volume you need. But with too much gain, you know, you get, uh, uh, I mean, you get feedback. You can get feedback real easy, but I'm not getting any, you know, obvious feedback. But you can get like a, well, I'm hearing kind of a low-end rumble, which is just a lower-end feedback, really, and not uh, not high-end feedback. High-end high as in frequencies, you know, it's a lower frequencies, I think. So um, normally it works really well, but some, something kind of changes once in a while, um, all kinds of things you're wiring. Uh, uh, I always make a practice of doing something that uh, I've learned from years ago. You know, um, when you have something set there's set up, just a static setup that you don't change hardly ever, you will get uh, um, oxidation on the connectors. And all you have to do to keep that from building, and that will cause resistance in your in your wiring, and then your signal will get weaker, and it'll get weak. If you don't ever do anything about it, then you'll get weaker and weaker until you're like, what the heck's going on here? And you'll keep gaining things, and then you're getting feedback problems. So what I always do, every time I turn this thing on, I, all you got to do is just twist your connections. And you can't do an XLR, though, of course. You, it, you can't twist it. It's three-prong. And usually they don't tend to do that as much either under noticeably anyway but anyway I twist all these others and see like my output going to the that's a quarter inch and that uh, TS quarter inch and then coming out of the uh, V amp their quarter inch down to 3.5 millimeter and these other ones I just do them I'm not using them but I just do them just on account of cost but uh, I'm going to do I, I do know that I have the gain up higher than usual and I have the right now I have the uh, channel level about where I used to keep it all the time and usually you can just leave it like that and you don't have trouble for you know a few weeks a month two <clears throat> but lately things are just kind of changing uh, back and forth and then of course you've got your computer now that's something I haven't done in a while I haven't twisted that cable on the back of the computer in a while I don't think I'll do that right now um, these are decent cables I've got, and they don't tend to oxidize really quickly. They def they don't really need to be twisted every time you turn them on and off. It takes months, you know, for something to start ha oxidation to ha happen. But twisting them just rubs the op oxidation off when it's new and not very thick. You know, it's easy to do. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, I'm talking, talking, and you can maybe be able to hear what I'm talking about. So, uh I'm going to try turning on the, uh, let's see, where is it? Okay, I'll get here. Okay, let me get on the desktop so you can see what it is I'm doing. Now, here's my inputs. I'm not going to be using the audio uh, over the, from Cam 1. Any, I don't have a mic plugged into it. Well, I mean, it's got a mic built in, but I'm not going to be using that. It's muted uh, and stay muted. Uh, and there's, the audio's not turned on in IP webcam either. But the mic aux, that is the SM58 going through the mixer, in the in the VM effects unit that I was just showing, and then mic aux two is my lapel mics. I have dual lapel mics, and they're just wired together down to one input, um, <clears throat> and they're not stereo; they're mono. But uh, and which actually works out in this case because I'm using a USB. Uh, in order to have two separate channels in the computer, then I need a second sound card. So that USB sound card. Is this serving as another? It has an input and out, but it's a mono input and a stereo output. Well, my normal, your built in um, inputs on the uh, computer, I'm almost certain that most of them these days are stereo mic inputs, but usually most mics aren't stereo. Well, some of them are, but true stereo mic is two separate mics, you know. Uh, 
and then you can use the TRS connection to get a right and left channel. Most of them are mono mic wired to both sides, and it gives it the effect of being stereo. You know, you get it on both sides. But this, <coughs> this input, it says right on it. I, well, it says, I guess it says it on the device because I, I knew it for sure the other day. Um, I didn't go look it up on my computer or look at the, you know, when I bought it. Oh, it says mono right on where you plug it in. It says mic, mono mic, or something like that. So, um, and I have plugged in something that had a stereo mic input in it. I think one time I plugged something in there and it didn't get a signal. So, but the the uh, the adapters I have to come with my lapel mic here work just fine. But right now we're on the SM58, and I'm going to turn on the. Uh, I tried using the head. I don't. I don't want to get out my headphones and put them on my head. To tell the truth. Um, so I'm going to try doing it while I'm making a video uh, by um, using the advanced properties right I just right click on the gears well you could do it either way you can just click the gears but anyway you need to get to advanced properties and it never comes up showing the whole thing now there's something I, I had considered the other day you don't need I noticed that it seems to somehow automatically pick the first four tracks it OBS mixes, well, you can choose how you want to mix it down, but I'm mixing down to stereo, so there's no problem there other than, you know, I had said that, so, you know, if you're using a channel that, uh, if you've got a channel selected that actually doesn't have a signal on it, sometimes you can get noise, especially with analog gear. Now, that could be happening here. I forgot about that. I'd set, I turned that all on the other day. It wasn't all on. It was just up to channel four. And I thought, well, let's just turn them all on for good measure in case, in case I turn on something that has, a, you know, extra channels on it. Really, it would only happen in the desktop audio. I don't have any equipment with, you know, more than two channels. But, yeah, so I think uh, and I'm kind of scared to go down a little below four because I'm not sure how OBS routes things. Uh, like Mike Ox 2 could be on 3 and 4 and Mike Ox 1 or just Mike Ox could be on 1 and 2. Like That's why I'm a little... That's why I turned them on. So Anyway, I'm going to turn this on the on the out monitor. You can monitor... Now when you monitor uh, only mute output, well you, you can't hear it but I don't think it goes to the recorder either so I, I wouldn't really. I can't see much of a use for that. I, tr I tried it out the other day, and now I, and I listened back, but I didn't listen to every inch of the video, so I'm not sure what it did. Now I can't remember to be honest. But monitor and output that will. I, I believe. There, there we go. go. Let's, Let's turn, turn it down. down. So, Let's turn it way down, down so I can still talk. talk. It drives me nuts uh, hearing myself on an echo, echo like that. But. Um, <clears throat> um, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm going, I'm going to mute, mute the desktop, desktop audio because, because that's what makes it an extreme echo. Now, and I, it won't help me to get rid of any odd sounds if I've got odd sounds, you know. So, um, uh, anyway, let's try it and see what it's, see if I can tell. Check one, two. When I see it's going to feedback real easy. You know, that's the high end feedback, and that's feeding back on my mic. So I can't turn it up very much. Check. Can barely hear that low end rumble. I think I'm gonna try turning down the gain because I usually I don't use that much gain on the mixer itself. Check one two. Check. Check one two. Check. Check. Hello. Check. Check one two. Okay, so I might have fixed it. And my signal still seems okay. Okay, now, uh, oh, I meant to do that first. I meant to take these out. I'm going to take these out and see if I can tell any difference. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. That's what I thought, that nothing would happen. Check, check, hello, check. Check, 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 check. Hello, check. So I think I'll leave them. <clears throat> yeah, no, I think I'll take out five and six since this system did that. Well, I won't. Now let's don't because then I won't know for sure what's happening where. Okay, now let's turn that off. Now we're gonna switch to the uh, switch to the mic aux two, which is a lapel mic. I'm gonna listen to it for a second, but uh, my problem is not gain related or. Anything. Uh, but I'm gonna listen to it. Check one. Hello, check, check. 
Check. Hello, check. 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 Hello, check. Check. Still hear it. Probably takes it out of the recording. Check. Hello, check. Now, it's wanting to feed back because of the speakers. I mean, these um, hell mics, you know, they, they pick up the whole room a lot. They don't have really any uh, noise canceling like an SM58. They don't have any. Uh, they pick up, they're made, a uh, condenser mic's made to pick up a, more of a wider area than an SM58. So, um, that won't help. Uh, let's see. I do what I want to do. Yeah, I can do filters. Okay, and I can leave that up so that if I want to, I can turn that on. So, <clears throat> I have a noise gate on here. And uh, that thing has changed itself. Must be automatic. I want to do a screenshot of that. Okay, the compressor is probably okay. I don't think it's uh, slamming the signal down too quick, but it is the noise gate. It shuts down the signal entirely until you till enough decibels of sound hit you know the mic. And so what it's doing is it's cutting off the beginning of some of my more quiet words. Now, I swear it was at 39 when I turned it on by, when I turned it on uh, the other day, and I just left it on the defaults. Now the attack time, time seems awful high. Release 60 milliseconds. I used to do real quick, and I still, I, real quick releases when I used to real, you know, rack mount compressors on them for bands. I just figured though, but the things are not the same in uh, software compressors. Sure, I know, because I would never do more than, uh, two to one was my, def my start out, and then maybe I would do at the most I ever did was four to one. On the ratio, the top one here, that's 10 to one. And actually, if you don't get up around 10 to one, you're not gonna get hardly any compression in almost every software, every compressor I've ever used. So I've been using them since they were available for, <clears throat> you know, uh, well, when I started getting, I, when I first started seeing them was in the early 2000s. So. And the noise gate though, I thought that was a bit high because, um, Looking at the um, at meter, and they're not not too far. They're pretty accurate. Fairly seem to be fairly accurate. Um, so it's the first one is ten negative. No, that's negative. What is it? so small? Negative forty, I guess. Actually, it's negative fifty. Okay, fifty, fifty. F Maybe try the other. Got a closer microscope here. I don't leave the lights on. I just normally turn the lights on. I won't need a light to look at the monitor. That is so small, I cannot read it. Get this SM58 up out of the way. Now I can get closer. And forgot it was on the wireless one. 55, 50. I think it might be 60, 45. They look like they're going in fives though, but that's 55. The bottom one, yeah, they get to, the number gets smaller as you go up because this is a negative number 40, 35. Then it jumped 20. Right, let's go the other way. We start at 0 dB 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. That does make sense, doesn't it? That is in fives. Okay. So that's negative 60 dB. Now, it's saying it starts cutting off. Now that's the thing that was throwing me off the other day. Close threshold, open threshold. Okay, close is when it shuts down the signal altogether. That's the only thing it could mean. Open is when it opens up and lets the signal through. Now they were opposite each other. That was what was throwing, well they still are. Close at 32 and open at 26. Why would you close? Oh yeah, 26, okay, because it's backwards. Okay, now it makes I knew I was probably wrong because, you know, they don't set these presets and these softwares wrong. <laughs> these programmers know numbers. That's what number programming is, is numbers. So, so it's at uh, 32. And then when it gets, the signal gets, uh, yeah, everything below 32 dB is shut off. 
Okay, and everything. Uh, but it's not going to open till 26 dB. That's a little bit light. I, I think, and that's what's chopping off my, uh, the beginning of some of my words. It's not bad. So let's say, uh, I think if I click on it, I can, yeah, I can use my 26. Um, got to make sure I get it right. Okay, the bigger the number, okay. <clears throat> 26, 28, 30. Yeah. Open at 30. Let's do a little more than that. I mean, oh, wait. Yeah. It's still hard for me to think in reverse. Okay. 32. Yeah, if I just look at the meter. Hello? Hello? Okay, if I just look at the meter. I'm going to say 30, actually 32 might be good, 32, okay, I'm going to try to fine tune it, you know, and you want this number to be, they had the top number bigger, close, it should be bigger, okay, bigger, bigger, bigger. Okay. 40, 32, well, let's see. 32 to 38. Let's try that. My background noise is not bad at all with this mic. There's, there is? Oh, because the compressor's on, right. It goes, yeah, because as soon as I stop talking, it goes down to nothing, which is what the, compre uh, the noise gate does. Check one, two. So when you start talking... And that black line that jumps up there, that can help you in setting the, uh, setting your, gives you kind of a median of your signal, I guess you could say. And then the end of the green line's the peaks. So, uh, hello, check, one, two, one, two, hello, check. Hello, check, hello, check. Hey, Don here. Okay, now that makes, it, if I look at that black uh, line, hello, check, hello, check then um, <clears throat> I think maybe I'm still cutting it off early. Check one, two. Hello, check. Hello, check. It really looks like we ought to be more around 40. Hello, check. Hey, hello, check, check. Um, and I thought I could actually hear it a little bit when I turned on the monitor. Let's try that again. Hello, check. Oh, check. Hello, check. Hello, check. Check, check, check. Hello? Hey, hey, Don here. I'm trying to check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check, check, check. <clears throat> okay, so, um, yeah, I can't talk normally when I'm doing a sound check. You know, it, it's just not in me. You, mostly what you're looking for is the extremes, and, and I've, my, my, mouth, my brain is trying to do, try to, uh, Mostly for, the, I guess, for the loud, you know, what's going to happen when you get too loud. So, um, now let's switch mics, and I'm going to watch that little black line. Of course, my compressor and everything on the uh, on the SM58 is not, I don't have compression turned on in OBS Studio. Because <coughs> it doesn't need it. Because it's in the, uh, it's in the, the amp. <coughs> Dang it. All right, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, <clears throat> check one, two, check one, two. Yeah, it's pretty much writing about the same. Let's turn them both on now. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Well, the uh, lapel's a bit behind the uh, check one, two, check one, two. Okay, check one, two. The lapel's a bit behind the SM58, so that tells me that was well, probably the uh, compressor doing that. I suppose you could disable them somehow. Yep, you sure can. Check one, two. Check one, two. No, the signal. Now that black line is doesn't get changed. Hello, check. Check one, two. I've got it disabled right now. Let's disable the compressor too. Check one, two. Now you can hit the red a lot easier. Let's turn the compressor back on. Let's 
so you can it's still um, okay check one two check 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 one two check 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 and I don't think that <clears throat> I'm thinking I'm just I'm just kind of uh, guessing what the black line does by watching it and by other soft audio software I've used where I've seen things like that and uh, what I think it is is it's telling you kind of the medium of your input signal median median of your input signal so that tells me then that I'm still too high on the noise gate check one two hello check hello check I need to be check one two I'm gonna say I don't want to close it any sooner than 40. I'm going to try 40 and see how that does. And uh, hello, chick. Hey, hello, chick. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. <clears throat> Let's see where the SM58 is doing it at. Let me turn them. I'll just have them both on for a minute. Check one, two. Hello, chick. Hello, chick. Hello, chick. Check one, two. Hello, chick. Yeah, that's the SM58 uh, is much, you know, the median's higher, <clears throat> but it works really well, so I definitely don't want to change that. And of course, these are two different software animals. This one, uh, this is a purely, purely so, uh, comp this is software, and the uh, and the uh, Behringer is a con combination analog and digital equipment, you know. So some of it's going to be in software, but. Compressors, uh, you know, have been. I'm not sure how. I'm not sure what does what. I think the effects are, are all digital, and the the compression and the n noise gates are probably. Well, I don't know. They could be purely analog, or it's probably it's a combination of that much. It could just be the EQs and stuff that are analog, <clears throat> but uh, that is on how that thing is made. So anyway. Um, I'm going to try 40 and then anything below 40 will be shut off. And check one, two. Oh, wait. Hello, check. Hello, check. Actually, I wanted to open it 40, I think. Hello, check. At least check. So set it to open it 40. Check. Hello, check. Check, check. Hey. Hey, check. That seemed to change things, though. No, it didn't. Now, um, everything shut off. Hello, check. I don't want it to sound pretty, you know, fairly natural. So I'm going to say everything below 45 is going to be shut off. It's going to open at 40, <coughs> and we'll see how that actually sounds. Now well, let's <coughs> try if I can. Let's see if I can listen to it for a second without it and tell anything about it on the speakers here. Check one, two. Hello, check. Hey, check. Hey, Don here. Check. Hey, Don here. Check one, two. Check. Hey, Don here. Hmm. It's doing something. Check one, two. Check one, two. Oh, no. I think I just wasn't given enough enough uh, effort into the clap because I wasn't seeing it going in the red zone, and I thought, hmm. Okay, now let's turn both mics on again. That's kind of a good measure. Did I have them both on the whole time? Hey, check. Oh no, I didn't have the SM58 in front of me. Check one, two. Hello, check. I think that's not bad. They seem to be my median actually seems to have raised on the lapel. Okay. Hello, check, hey, check, hey, check, that. we're really, really close now. You can see the black lines there dancing around, check one, two. Oh, and you can see on the mic meter, the uh, mic aux is showing a stereo. It's showing two green lines, two black lines. Uh, and the mic two is showing one. So there you go. My, my, my see, my bear, I'm, <clears throat> I'm mixed, my output on my Behringer is stereo. You know, my, my mic is, um, my mic um, is, uh, SM58, of course, is mono, single channel input, but then the Behringer, you know, turns it into stereo, and I mix it, you know, and I'm wiring in stereo. Whenever you mix to, for concerts, you generally don't uh, wire for stereo sound, because that means you got to have double E amps, you know, 
you could have the same amount of speakers, you know, left and right side, but you're going to have to have double the amps, and amps are the most expensive component usually, or they're very, they're plenty expensive anyway. If you can have good ones, crown amps or something like that. <clears throat> so um, let's go back to the um, wired one now. But yeah, that, they're they're right in the together. So I think I did good. Um, now the proof is in the in the sound. You know, how does it sound? So. Uh, I, I'm going to leave all the tracks selected in case I ever, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Uh, and in case I ever need, um, and the compression, I'm not going to mess with I'm, I'm not, it doesn't feel like it's holding the signal down at the top end and not letting go quick enough. Although I think 60 milliseconds seems kind of slow on the release, but to me, but uh, I used to put them pretty much the same, really. But I'm going to leave all that. And the threshold on the, uh, Compressor, it starts compressing at negative 18 dB, so that's a good, you know, and then it, uh, well, and the ratio is how hard it compresses it, how quickly it shuts it down, and you want to make it less obvious, so see, negative, eight, negative 18 is pretty far down there, but it's, uh, it's, it, <clears throat> well, at 10 to 1, it seemed like it would, in a regular compressor or a rack mount compressor, uh, from well, the ones I use in the nine, you know, in the 90s, is the ones I'm talking about. The early 90s to late 90s, DBXs, Elises, and sometimes maybe something else like an Ashley or something. Um, you know, not not super high end stuff. But Ashley, well, Elises was the lowest end back then, and then DBX was good, but not the high end stuff. You know, <clears throat> and uh, it worked really well. And DBX is really what I learned on. But anyway, and they are a little bit different. They don't all act the same. And so the software is just completely different. I would be doing two to one right now on a rack mount compressor. Anyway, seems fine. And uh, so if you're doing using software and it's decent software, you probably want to start with the, uh, let me turn that desktop audio back on right now before I forget. Uh, you want to start with the defaults and work from there. And, First I thought it was okay, but then I started listening back to my test today that I did, you know, before this one, and I was like, oh, heck, wow, I'm getting full words, or two, one and a half words cut off, you know, so. So, uh, <clears throat> now if I've got rid of that low-end rumble in the SM58, and that was on the mixer, I just kind of tried to do it, you know, tried to do it r real mixing style, but of course with the speakers right here within... About two feet away from the mic, that's pretty hard to do. You need your speakers not pointing at the mic. <laughs> you know, and you can do that perfectly. Uh, well, still, for, for setting things like that, I usually did use headphones. I guess I'm being lazy. I just don't want to want to dig them out, and I don't want to. They don't work super well because for me because in order to hear the compression, I guess I could try it on the, and I would still have all that. As soon as you, when you turn on the, the sound like I did here in OBS, it just, it causes, I don't care how many, uh, it seems to me that even when I mute the desktop, there's still an echo, even whenever, nothing's on but the SM58 or whatever, and I mute the desktop, and it's not, see, the desktop ends up giving it a double sound, you know, it duplicates the sound. <clears throat> so, um, what I do is I listen to it on the mixer, and I, I send, a, I send the main signal out of the, Behringer, I send the main, the, the main signal, okay, the main signal coming out of the mains goes into the Behringer, and then it comes out of the main output of the Behringer around to my computer, and that gets the best quality sound, and then there is an earphone output on the Behringer, and it's not a very good quality, it's kind of noisy, but it's something, and so I send it back into the tape input on the uh, Behringer mixer, and then I can plug my headphones in. I actually use the control room output because it's better than using the it's uh it works better i think the when i use them anyway i send tapes to control room and then i listen on the control room output <coughs> and um and not only is the behringer earphone a little noisy but the control room output does have a little noise in it it's not quiet as uh, i've tried i thought i might record off of it but it's not as quiet as the main output unless it was just something about my signal routing that caused that. But I did try that because I thought, well, I can have one output going to this computer and one of the other output going to the other. That's what I was going to do, send the other output to mom's computer so that I could uh, just, when I switched, uh, I could, uh, 
when I wanted to switch from streaming on this computer to streaming on that computer, all I had to do is stop the stream here because OBS will do a, you can turn on a backup stream. So YouTube has a backup ingest server. That's what they call it. And so I've done it before. You turn on this stream as your main stream. That's what I did. And then I turn on the backup stream over on mom's computer. And then when I was ready to show it, instead of doing remote desktop, uh, <clears throat> I just stopped this stream and that one took over. And then I just used my KVM switch to switch over to her computer. And it works really well, but the uh, the sound w was a little bit noisy. It wasn't as good coming out of the control room. So uh, I decided to quit doing that and I would just manually unplug these two cables that's the main output on the on the v amp and then manually plug in they're laying down there somewhere the other two um just when i wanted to switch you know <laughs> and then i had the quiet audio you know the, i mean the, no background noise so anyway oh that's another story but um everything depends on your equipment that's for sure <clears throat> but uh, let's see how this goes and uh, maybe we'll have a uh, sound that I like. Okay. Bye-bye.